good morning uh, welcome to lecture 20 okay. so in the last lecture we presented this generic greedy algorithm so uh, well we looked into the structure of greedy algorithm we stated certain things like um, uh, the properties of greedy algorithm and so on so we uh, towards the end we looked at a simple structure for greedy algorithm which we called as generic greedy algorithm basically for the purpose of doing mathematical analysis uh, of such algorithms so the algorithm is i'll just go over it so the objective here is to build a set okay so our outcome is a set okay so we, there, there might be some optimality condition so for now we'll just ima imagine maximality condition okay the we want the size of the set to be maximum. A typical greedy procedure for it would be you start with an empty set and S be the choice space where uh, so your solution is going to be a subset of S. So as long as S is not empty, you keep on adding. So you make a greedy choice. So this greedy choice could be the smallest weight or whatever, the best fit value, whatever. Okay. So, or the smallest, uh, best feasible value, you improve the set by adding this element and update S accordingly. Okay, so once you include this, there might be forbidden elements, so you remove them from S and repeat this as long as no more such changes are possible and output the set that you have got. Okay, so we call such a procedure as a greedy algorithm or a generic greedy algorithm. So you can imagine uh, this way, uh, you have S, the universe, this is my S, okay. So you have subsets of S, and let's say this is the empty set, okay. So you're adding one element at, at a time, So you can imagine this is your uh, Hasse diagram of subsets. Okay. So you're adding one element at a, at a time. So you have marked elements, which are feasible solutions, okay? Or feasible sub-solutions, let's call it as. So you are improving one element at a time so that you are not out of the feasibility zone and you stop at one point, okay? So the greedy choice directs our path. So a greedy algorithm is essentially building a set with certain constraints so that you cannot build set further. You stop here. So if you look at this Hasse diagram, I hope all of you are uh, familiar with Hasse diagrams. Have you heard of that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. So Hasse diagram is for a poset, partially ordered set. So for any set, any finite set S, you can consider the set of all subsets of it, the inclusion, set inclusion as a partial order, right? Now, the partial order here I'm considering is the subset relation. So I'm just writing down the subsets, okay? So I'm drawing an arrow, so the at the top level is the whole set. At the bottom level is the empty set. Now you put subset relation. So hence, so elements of cardinality one less than S will be at the next level, two less than S will be the next level and so on. Empty set is at the bottom most level. So you can just imagine this greedy algorithm is navigating through this diagram, okay? So navigating through this diagram, so adding one element at a time, it traces a path. Okay, so only thing is it, there are certain conditions. Okay, so this greedy choice, so it should be feasible. Okay, so there should be some feasible condition. So if you mark all feasible sub solutions, say as red, then what we are saying is you're taking a path along the Hasse diagram, in the Hasse diagram, taking only red vertices, for example. Okay, so wherever you stop, 
this we call as local maxima okay so now the greedy algorithm to be correct what we need is all these local maxima should also be maximum so when i say local maxima it could be a maximal say for example in the scheduling case right you might come up with other maximal schedules which are smaller in cardinality than the best possible one but you cannot add any more task to it without really update uh, without re removing some of the tasks okay so those we call as local maxima so once we reach local maxima that's the end of it that means you cannot build it further intuitively for correctness of the greedy algorithm all we need is so depending on the choices that you make or irrespective of the choices that you make you should be hitting on global maxima not local maxima okay. yeah so this is an intuitive picture if you uh, didn't get some of the terminology local maxima or hasse diagram don't worry about it okay so i'll come to it again so now we are going to look at the mathematical definition of see all we are going to say is so this red dots right these are feasible solutions in the case of schedule scheduling problem feasible solutions are all conflict free schedules which may not be maximum which may not be maximal you just take one task it's conflict free if you take two tasks whose time intervals are disjoint that is two classes whose intervals are disjoint then it's a feasible schedule okay so if you put this red dots are as sub uh, subsets of tasks which are conflict free so what we want is want to impose a structure a restriction on or look at the structure of this and say when is our greedy algorithm going to perform correctly and when is it unlikely to perform correctly okay so yeah so the structure has a name it's called matroid okay so this was invented kind of independently independent of greedy algorithm this was invented and i think this was due to whitney uh hasler whitney i think it was in the 1930s 32 or whatever okay yeah so for this we need a finite set we call it as a ground set okay so e be a finite set so we call this as a ground set so a matroid over e is a pair e and calligraphic i which is a collection of subsets okay so we call this as independent sets the conditions are empty set, set should be in i okay so that is the first condition so let's call it as axiom 1 or let's call it as i1 and if a is a subset which is independent so this is a collection of independent sets and b is a subset of a then it is necessary that b is also independent that's how i'll read it okay so b is also independent that is b is also in e, i okay so in other words intuitively this is saying that it is subset closed so closed under subsets yeah. now comes the third and most important property okay so if there are two sets which are independent if one is larger than the other it is necessary that you have one element in the larger independent set using which you can grow the smaller one that is there is an x in b but not in a such that if you include x in a it should still be independent okay so <laughs> yeah so intuitively you can imagine so i'll just uh, roughly tell the equivalences here itself Uh, i mean it's a rough i mean i'm not going to mathematically prove them and so on so forget about empty set being an independent set the second condition right of course i'll be coming to examples so before coming to examples let's relate this to greedy i mean so whatever uh, 
the generic greedy algorithm that we had or the greedy algorithm that structure of greedy algorithm that we discussed in yesterday's lecture see intuitively i said these sets these independent sets are going to be our feasible solutions okay so what what does this mean so if a is feasible solution b is any subset of it then b must also be feasible so this is kind of substructure property okay it's not optimal there is no optimality condition here but it's substructure uh, 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 property that is any subset of a solution is also a solution so let's take uh, for example the scheduling problem okay if you have a feasible scheduling that is a conflict free scheduling that is a subset of classes or tasks whose time intervals are disjoint need not be the maximum though if you take any subset of it it is also conflict free right that's exactly the property that we are talking about okay so if you take any subset of your solution it should also be solution it may not be optimal but it should be a feasible solution okay the second one is saying if you have two schedules okay such that one has a larger number of tasks that means you can take one task from the larger schedule and if you add that task still the smaller schedule is still feasible it's a valid schedule that is you can grow so this is nothing but the greedy choice property so closed under subsets is substructure property though there is no optimality condition here so sub, when i say substructure i mean it, subset is also a solution so this is the greedy choice property hello sir yeah sir in the third point when we consider it to the example of scheduling if yeah. suppose a and b are uh, like if they conflict no in the case in the case of uh, yeah yeah so that's a good point but in the case of scheduling this property is not true right away okay yeah okay yeah so for scheduling we will have to make some assumptions to have this property we'll we'll come to that maybe towards the end of today's lecture or in the next lecture so yeah scheduling is actually an outlier here it it admits greedy but th there is some trouble with this okay i mean you can easily build a counter example you can have a one class which is scheduled through the day okay take that that is uh, say one class which starts at 8 am and ends at 5 am a uh, 5 pm okay so that is a conflict free schedule right now if take any other classes say 8 to 9 9 to 10 and so on they are also feasible schedules but you cannot add any of them into this because it is, this is going to conflict with everybody right so that way it does not satisfy this greedy choice property we'll we'll rectify it okay we'll see how to reason about that okay so that is one outlier yeah. okay so i'll so what i'm going to do is the rest of the remainder of the lecture today i'm going to uh, spend a lot of time on matroids so we'll see properties of matroids and we'll see a generic greedy algorithm fitting well into structure of matroids and analyze such algorithm and we'll also give an optimality criterion that is optimal greedy choice okay so greedy choice with optimality condition so and that will all of this will immediately give us a correctness of minimum spanning tree algorithm for example all of the minimum spanning tree algorithms there are two right kruskal's and prims okay and maybe in the next lecture i'll talk about scheduling and we'll also talk briefly about greedy algorithms which where there may not be a matroidal structure right away okay that is our storage problem okay yeah so we'll start with an example so let's be concrete now so i hope uh, this so these are these are called matroid axioms okay so at least next 15 to 20 minutes i'm going to spend on examples so the at least two uh, examples we are going to discuss okay so so let's examine okay so let us take uh, yeah so this so okay so this is my usual practice so i'll take it as e okay so let the ground set be 1 2 3 4 okay so let the collection of independent sets so whenever i say i i'll call it as independent set okay 
I'll tell you why very soon. Not now. So let's take this collection of sets. Okay. Empty set 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 2, 4, 1, 4, 1, 3. That is all subsets of cardinality 2 and all subsets of cardinality 1 and the empty set. Okay. Now let's examine the axioms. So let's verify one by one. So I1 satisfied, right? Empty set is present. So I1 is satisfied. Now how about the second property I2? So any subset of single element set is an empty set, which are anyway in the R independent. Because, I mean, which is, I mean, it's an empty set, right? So now consider any subset of cardinality 2. So 1, 2. We have all single element sets present here, right? As independent. So hence, if A is an independent set and B is a subset of it, then B is also necessarily in it. B is also necessarily independent. Right by just examination. So if you take two threes, so any subset of cardinality, any subset of these sets are of cardinality one, and we have all subsets of cardinality one present here. So property two is satisfied. That is I two is satisfied. Now I three. So I three is also not very difficult to see. So because what I did is I took all subsets of cardinality 2. Okay. So in other words, so let's take A and B. So, okay. So tell me examples of A and B. So A should be of smaller cardinalities. That means A should be single turn set. Say A is 2. And B is, so B should not contain 2. If B contains 2 trivially B, is a union x right so that is not so it should not contain two so let's take three four okay so now what what does this statement say if cardinality of a is less than cardinality of b which it is true cardinality of a is one cardinality of b is two then there is an x which is in b but not in a such that a union x is in i So is there an X here? Hello. Three or four. Ah, yes. Sir, why are you saying B should not contain two? Yeah, if B contains two, A is a subset of B already, right? I mean, so this condition is pretty much trivially satisfied, right? If A is a proper subset of B, and this condition is satisfied, right, immediately. I can take B as well, right? Or remove some elements from B, so that the difference is one element. That's it, right? Okay. So, but can B... Uh, sorry? In this example, to show it, you are taking such a, uh, such B where there is no element. Yeah, yeah. So, no, okay. I, I, maybe I'll, I'll justify my remark. Okay, so, see... In this case, so first second condition says that it is closed under subsets. Okay. So that means any subset of B is also independent. Now, if A is a proper subset of B, okay, so this can be trivially satisfied, right? So you take a subset of B which contains A plus one element. So that is also independent by definition by, by this property. Right? So hence A union X is in independent. It's not for just for this example. I mean, if A is a subset of B with condition I2 satisfied, this is trivially satisfied. So that's the reason I said, uh, when you verify, you need not take B a superset of A. Sir, because we have already mean, verified I2. Sir, when you mean independent, you are talking about uh, there are no common elements between two sets. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> that's what I said, right? So, yeah, that, that's a terminology, okay? So, independent is, so any set in this set, right? I, 
calligraphic i is independent that's the terminology i'm using sorry i mean independent does not mean anything else here okay i'm so used to saying that this is independent so i'm just i mean the matroid terminology is that okay so this calligraphic i right so any subset in calligraphic i is called independent so these are all independent sets now we are defining them to be independent okay this is the relation that we are imposing for now whenever i say independent this is it some some set which is contained in this calligraphic i is independent set okay so why the word independent i'll justify later okay so this is the matroid literature terminology some i'm like i said i've been uh, working on matroids for last 12 years or so so i cannot avoid that terminology it will come to me very naturally i hope there is no confusion sir do you mean then this is a total ordering uh, no 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 there is no ordering right now uh, don't worry about ordering and so on see there are only two things okay so one is my ground set and the other one is set of all independent sets okay so we are right now for this example we are just verifying they satisfy all these three conditions or not okay so whenever i say independent set a sub subset present in calligraphic i so here here it happens that all subsets of cardinality 1 or 2 are present it need not be the case we'll see more examples soon okay yeah uh yeah. excuse me sir yes uh sir in this uh, third ex uh, in this example for the third axiom b could also be 2 3 or 2 uh, 4 as well yeah, it's not necessary so it, yeah if it is 2 3 it is this condition is trivially satisfied for that pair right if so, that's something that contains a this is trivially satisfied okay i'll come to that i mean if it is confusing i'll come to that okay so right now don't assume anything right okay yeah okay so let me take b as 3 4 so ignore the fact that okay i said a, b should not contain a i'll 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 uh, i mean clarify it so yeah so now what uh, so what is x that was my question 3 4 so in this case in this example it so happens that you can pick any element in b okay so a union 3 is also in i in fact a union 4 is also in i okay calligraphic i so sir 3 4 is the one subset or we are taking 3 and 4 different subset i mean no no 3 is an element right 3 is an element 3 4 is a subset so these are subsets so empty set is a subset one is a subset 2 3 1 2 is a subset 2 3 is a subset 3 4 is a subset subset of what e okay subset of 1 2 3 4 uh, yes uh, but in b we are taking a single turn 3 and 4 or we are taking a pair 3 and 4 it's not a pair it's it's a subset 3 and 4 3 4 this one so i'm picking this as b this is my b this is my b what was my a a was here Okay. So then x would be three four. No no no. So see see this notation no. So what does this notation says? There is an x in B but not in A. So what is B set minus A? It's three four. So x should be either three or four. But it says it need not be everything. So it it it, it just says there is one element. If it satisfies for three, we are happy. it all it so happens that in this example it also satisfies for, for 4 okay that's a peculiarity of this example so since 2 3 is in i since 2 4 is in i see it might be a bit confusing Uh, to many of you so i'm saying 2 3 is in i okay so this is a membership relation right so i'm saying a set is a member of another set okay 
so i'm not talking about 2 is in i or 3 is in i i'm saying this subset is a member of i this subset is a member of i okay that is a notation which is fine right you must have uh, seen uh, relations i mean uh, subsets of power sets so this is basically a subset of power set i is a subset of power set of ground element a ground set okay so here maybe i'll just write so i mm, sorry i is a subset of 2 power e that is power set of e i hope everybody is familiar with the power set notation that is set of all subsets okay that's exactly 2 power cardinality of e many subsets so i is a collection of subsets i will will just use this terminology i is a collection of subsets okay we say that e along with i forms a matroid so we call this collection of subsets as independent sets of the matroid if there are three axioms which are satisfied so we call these axioms are independent set axioms independent set axiom 1 independent set axiom 2 independent set axiom 3 okay so two we have one and two we have verified fairly so we were in the process of verifying three for this set so for that i took example of a and b as sets and then we saw that th this condition is satisfied what does it say if b happens to be of larger cardinality there should be some element in b which you can add to a such that the resulting set is still independent so this notation is saying independent okay so that is satisfied for this pair now how about other pair pairs so 2 with the 2 4 so a s 2 b s 2 4 so the statement is trivially true right i can take x as 4 if i add x to a i get 2 4 which is itself is my choice of b which is independent okay so similarly 3 and 1 4 does it satisfy if i take a as 3 and b as 1 4 yes it is satisfied sir it satisfies right so yeah. this is one so the second example is a is 3 b is 1 4 so with a as 3 you take any other subset b for b that say 2 4 or 1 3 or 3 4 or 2 3 or 1 2 this will satisfy okay so similarly if you take a as 4 and take b of b as any of these it will again satisfy okay and similarly if you take a as 1 and b as any of this this will satisfy that are, these are the only possibility right remember that the condition we had was cardinality of a should be less than cardinality of b so that means b has to be of size 2 and a has to be of size 1 empty set no big deal right empty set is a subset of anything so no big deal there so you can verify that so i'm just leaving it to you verifying that for any pair ab such that cardinality of a is smaller than cardinality of b this condition is satisfied okay so hence this is a matroid so hence m equal to e i is a matroid so this is one example of a matroid okay excuse me sir yes sir suppose if uh two co Two four is in not in the set I, then there will be at least one that uh, a union three is in subset I, is a, is in I. So it will also hold true for I three, right? Because there is at least one. X yeah. So if you remove two four, I think it should still hold. Yes. Yeah. So it works for at least one. Yeah. Probably you can remove two of them. I think if you uh, do it a bit carefully. Uh. Yeah. But yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Sir, so if even for one uh, condition is satisfied, like suppose we took here three four, right? A S two and B S three four. If only for uh -huh. this also it is satisfied, and for others it is not satisfied, you can still say that axiom no. three is no, 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 no. So this axiom there is an implicit. So if A A B in I, right? That means for all A B in I. Okay, with the, this condition there is an implicit 
universal quantifier right so whenever we write in english right if this is written what does it mean this should be satisfied by all a b else you would say there exists a and b such that this condition happens okay if there is no there exists condition or there exists word use so that means it's for all so it should happen for all a and b okay so condition i3 should happen uh, satisfied for all a and b not just for one so that's what i just left to you to verify so for every pair a b how many pairs are there so 4 into 6 24 pairs right so there are 6 right so all 24 pairs will satisfy this okay so so let's uh, have a non example with the same ground set okay e so i have taken all subsets of cardinality 1 i have taken uh, 1 2 3 4 subsets of cardinality 2 and i have included one subset of cardinality 3 see there is no rule why should it be cardinality 2 i could have also added higher cardinality elements okay okay so let's verify the axiom so as it, i have claimed in the slide title right it's a non example okay so that means it should not satisfy axioms but let's verify what are the axioms which are satisfied and what are the axioms which are not satisfied yeah so does it satisfy i1 and i2 let's see okay sorry yeah Does it satisfy? I, what is I one? Empty set should be in the independent set. Yeah, so it satisfies, right? Empty set is present. Empty set is here, so it satisfies I one. So what is I two? If A element of I and B subset of A, then B element of I. Yeah, so that means so. Any subset of an independent set should also be independent, right? Let's verify that. So, any two-element subset, if you take so any two-element independent set, if you take a subset which is an one-element set, right? So, we have included all four subsets of cardinality one as independent. So, hence any subset of these will also be independent, right? So, subset of one two, which is one or two. similar subsets of 1 3 1 or 3 excluding the empty set 2 or 4 so all of them are there okay so i2 is satisfied by these now how about 1 to 3 i have all three two cardinality subsets of 1 to 3 1 2 is present 1 3 is present 2 3 is present so i2 is satisfied for every independent set all of its subsets are also independent okay so i2 is also satisfied so it must be that i3 is not satisfied right because i stated that it is non example unless i am wrong okay so i just taken an example here where i3 is not satisfied can you see why i3 is not satisfied for a and b So I'll just go back and let you stare at I three, okay? So because you might be wondering what is I three. This is I three, okay? Yeah, I should have kept a copy of it. In this example, huh? there is an X, uh, including which we can grow A, right? So if Let's you see. go to the example, uh, we can take yeah. two from B, and two comma four is still. Oh, yeah, you're right. So so then I'm wrong there, right? Okay, so two you can take. Okay, so we can take b equal to one uh, three. So b equal to one three. Yeah, that one three one two is not present. One two is present, right? Okay, one four is not present. Yes, so it should be one three. Yeah. Sir, yeah, why is two three not working? Because we have uh, we have two four, right? We don't have three four. No, we have two four. Three four is not necessary, right? That's what. Okay. So I three basically says that exists an X, right? Okay. Okay. That I. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. So this was wrong. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. 
So if this is one three, this should work. Let's see one four and the three four. Both are not present, right? Yes. Yeah, one three. Okay. So with two three it works. So with the uh, A as four and B as one three. So let's explain it. So since four three is not in I and one four is not in I. See within a set, I'm not considering any ordering of the elements. Okay, I can write one four or four one. I can write three four or four three. Okay. Yeah. Therefore, A and B do not satisfy. I three. Okay. So therefore, E I above is not a matroid. So to show that a set collection of subsets is not a matroid, all you need to do is you need to give one counter example to one of the axioms. Either empty set is not present, or you have a set. Whose at least one of the subsets is not present in the independent sets, or you have a pair A and B such that uh, the independent axiom I3 or axiom I3 is not satisfied. Okay. So, yeah, so far, so what is your feeling about matroids? So I'm sure you have no feeling at all, right? Okay, some subset, some conditions, he has defined some axioms. I don't even see how to really feel for it, right? So there is no real feeling for it as such. I mean, these conditions are satisfied, so what? Maybe maybe it's satisfied, I mean, it, it helps or greedy, but so what? What? Why, why, why are they interesting? Okay, so these become interesting See any if you define any object, so anything, they become interesting only when you can relate it to something natural, okay? Or you can build on some object, okay? So our next example is going to be that. So we'll see that matroids are in abundance. So from many structures, you can derive matroids. They're very, very natural objects sitting there, okay? So that is what I am going to demonstrate. I mean, that is also going to help us in proving the correctness of, uh, so for example, Prim's or Kruskal's algorithm later on, okay? So this is going to be a very important example, okay? So now we'll see that we can derive matroids, we can define matroids on graphs, okay? So take any undirected graph, okay? So we can define a matroid on an undirected graph where the ground set is the set of all edges in the graph, okay? So if there are, say, in this example, there are four edges, so E will be the four edges. So I just, for simplicity, I'll label edges as one, two, three, four. So then E will be one, two, three, four, okay? Now the important point is, what is independent set? Okay, so independent sets are defined in this way. So remember that independent sets are nothing but subsets of edges. Okay, so again, when I say independent set here, it's nothing to do with the independence relation in the graph. Okay, so independent set in the graph, it has nothing to do with that. Okay, so remember that here I'm talking about independent sets of edges. Okay, so this independent set is the terminology used for matroids. Okay, so how is I defined? So you include a subset of edges if it satisfies the following property, okay? So if I consider the subgraph induced by that edge, it should not contain any cycle. Okay. That is if I take any subset, maybe let me mark some subsets, okay? So say subset of edges is one, two, and four. So how does the graph look like? So this is the graph. Sorry. Does it contain a cycle? So let me let me take example here. 
So example, let's take A as one, two, four. See, if you take any collection of edge, I can talk about induced graph, right? Say collection of edges or a subset of edges of a graph naturally defines a subgraph, right? So what is G of A now? So G of A is this subgraph, which So what is the subgraph? One, two, four. This is what G of A would look like. Does it contain a cycle? No. no. It does not contain a cycle, right? So therefore, sorry. Therefore, A is in I. Okay, so take any other example. So if you take one, two, three, will it be? So A is say one, two, three. So what is the induced subgraph? It is this triangle, right? Has a cycle. Therefore, A is not in I. Okay. Is the definition clear to everyone? So let's go over the definition once again. So given a graph, I'm defining a matroid based on this graph as follows. Okay. My ground set E is the collection of edges in E. Okay, the set of all edges in the graph G is going to be my ground set. Okay, now independent sets for this matroid are going to be subsets of edges, such a way that the subsets of edges should not contain a cycle. That is you basically considered a cyclic subsets. So for example, if I take A as one, two, four, I'm just numbering the edges as one, two, three, four. So one, two, four, so one, two, four is not a cycle in the graph. Whereas if I consider A as one, two, three, it's a cycle in the graph, hence it is not contained in I. Okay. Yeah, is it clear? I'll, I'll list the set of all independent sets in the next slide, but uh, is, it, is it clear to everyone? If there is a question, please shoot in. Hello. Ah, yes. Sir, in this example, it's quite evident that the third property is being satisfied, that is I3. Uh, how can we argue that it is always no satisfied? no no I, I haven't proven that it is a matter i'm going to do yeah we're going to spend some okay. time on it yes okay i'm just defining it I, yeah uh, right now i said it is a matter but we haven't yet proven that it is a matter we'll come to that yeah okay so now i'll list so this is how it looks like so i will look like so all so empty set is included because if you have no edge it does not contain any cycle right and all single edges are present one two three four all of them so if you take any pair of edges they are also present because they cannot form a cycle in this graph because we our graph is simple and does not have loops i mean uh, does not have parallel edges so all two cardinality sets now three cardinal sets what are which of them are uh, independent according to our definition so one two four is present one three four is present two three four is present but one two three is not present because it is forming a cycle okay yeah so now uh maybe quickly we'll verify if uh, for this example if all here, three e, axioms are satisfied yes yeah here, i didn't e hear should it, be right? up to four right i'm uh, sorry the e set it should yeah, not sorry, have sorry, five sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yes, I'm very sorry. No, I had a larger example and then I pruned it because I listing of the independent set was really too much for me. So I just, yeah, sorry. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so it, matroids, it so happens that if you, once you have larger ground set, right, 
listing of the independent set becomes too much because uh, yeah so if you draw a graph with six edges maybe with the five vertices or four vertices then number of independent sets becomes too huge okay so let's verify quickly very very quickly okay just to convince everyone so empty set is present. Hello, just a minute, sir. Ah, yes. Even if yes. I6 is there, this I is an independent set, right? No, that is fine. I mean, yeah, uh, no, this was uh, something I should have. OK, OK, just I was confirmed. Done. No, because my intention was to have a bigger example. But later on, I realized that writing the independent set is not feasible. I mean, it's not readable in a few minutes or whatever. So that is why I just dropped it. This this definition is valid. I mean, if you ha you can have a larger ground set and the independent set may not ha have elements from some, some elements from the ground set that is fine but yeah let's be a bit precise yeah, yeah. so is it closed under subsets it is right so you take any two element subset any subset of it is one element subset it is present so it's this portion is satisfied so now how about one two four one to four. So because any two element subset of edges is also independent, right? So hence this satisfies, this satisfies, this satisfies. So or in other words, I2 is satisfied. By examination, I just leave it to you to examine. So now how about I3? So if you look at this carefully, so up to here, right? If I consider this portion, this is nothing but my independent set for the first example, if you remember, right? This is exactly what we had as first example, though there was no graph sitting there. We labeled the ground set elements as one, two, three, four, and this was our collection of independent sets. Remember? So let's go back to slides. Yeah, this is pretty much it, right? This portion resembles, if you restrict the independent set size to two, exactly this claimed matroid. Okay. So now what I mean to say is we need to talk about I3 only when one of the sets is of size three. Otherwise, we know that. If both sets are of size at most to two, we know that it's satisfied already because this portion was there already in our matroid. The first example. So let me demonstrate it with one example quickly. Okay. So say, okay, give me one sample for A and for B, choice for B. Somebody, please. One. One, one okay one and uh, two three four bs two three four okay yeah now somebody what is there an x such that uh, if you add x to a it will still be independent yes sir yeah any of this right in this case it happens to be any of this because all two subset cardinality two subsets are independent so I can take any of them. So one, two is independent, right? One, three is independent. In fact, one, four is also independent. So I can take X as anything here, say X as two, then A union X is independent. This is the first choice. So give me one more choice. So instead of cardinality one, let's take cardinality two for A. A two three, A two three, B two three four. Okay, so B two three four. Yeah, so see, this is something that was I was talking about earlier, right? I didn't really detail. So if A is a subset of B, this condition is satisfied fairly trivially. Why is that? So I can just pick one element which is not present in A, I can still add to it. And then still what I have is a subset of B, right? So in this case, I can take four and add it to A. So I have two, three, four. 
2, 3, 4 is equal to A. In fact, science is, is, is also a subset of A, uh, B. Okay. So 2, 3, 4 is equal to B, and hence is also a subset of B. Okay. And we know that any subset of B is also independent, right? So hence this condition is satisfied trivially. So for that reason, let's consider something. So to make it more interesting, let's consider some other B. So B as something which does not contain both two and three. Shall we take one to four? Huh. Yeah. Yes, sir. One to four. Okay. One to four. Now, if you take one to four, so that should be an X. If you add that X to A, it should still be independent. Four. Four is there. Yeah, so only four, right? So here, there, the, this is an interesting non-trivial example. So if I add one, it does not work, right? One, two, three is not. One, two, three is a cycle here. One, two, three is not an independent set. Whereas if I add four, it is independent. See, in our earlier examples, we could add anything. That is why I wanted something which is non-trivial. So then take x as four, then a union four is independent okay so now i'll leave it to you to verify so if you take any such pair a and b this will be satisfied okay so i'm not going through all possible pairs yeah so offline please verify and convince yourself okay So now we are going to make a statement. So the claim is, it's not just for this example. If you take any undirected graph G and define MG as we did before. OK, so what was the definition? Let's go back quickly. So MG is E comma Cal I, where Cal I is collection of subsets of edges, all possible collections of edges that does not contain any cycle. So what are what are these? Have you heard of heard a name? Did we have a name for this in your previous algorithms or graph theory course? What is a collection of edges which is um, a cyclic? Path. Path. Are you sure? Trees. Huh? Trees. Yeah, trees is a close approximation, but we have a better name, right? Tree means yeah. it should be connected, right? Huh? Independent set. No. Independent set is the terminology that we use in math, right? No. Work. So have you heard of the term forest? Yes, sir. Yeah, it's exactly forest, right? So in other words, this is basically saying G A. So that is A is a forest. <laughs> Got it? So I cheated you all, right? I didn't really use this terminology. So if I had used forest, it's probably easier to understand. Sorry, I mean, I should have, and I forgot about it. Okay, so then it's very easy. Okay, so I is a collection of all forests, that is subsets of edges, which are forests, that is a cyclic. Okay, they should not contain a cycle. Okay, so let's go back to our statement. So the claim is, if such a, uh, so, sets that is set of all edges which form forests as declared as independent sets the corresponding set system is a matroid okay so the claim is whatever we have defined over this graph or not just the example graph over any general graph is a matroid and these matroids are very fairly well known i mean in the sense that they're very commonly occurring so these such matroids are called graphic matroids or you will also see the terminology of cyclic matroid. Okay. So these are called either, I mean, cyclic matroid of the given graph. In general, any matroid which is defined based on a graph is called a graphic matroid. Okay. So, yeah. I am in two minds. Should I start and always overshoot like usual or should I stop? Maybe I'll stop here today. Okay. We'll prove this in the next lecture.
because I always when I start something I'll overshoot okay so I'll go beyond the nine so yeah uh, if you have any questions please ask over email or over the tutorial session uh, this Friday and I, there is one request uh, can I have tutor extend the tutorial a bit will it conflict with anybody if there is a conflict please write me uh, over email or any other way okay or in the uh, next tutorial itself because we lost last week's tutorial if we can have say half an hour extra right so over a couple of tutorials we can make up others will have to sit for one full slot or another option is we'll break for lunch we'll come back at two three so two three people didn't say any conflict so i believe people are free in uh, on friday between two and three so you can have the second tutorial session okay so the yeah class reps i request you to just uh, collect information so we'll decide on friday itself for me it doesn't matter okay i'm available both the times so yeah if Everybody is fine. We'll extend it to say 30 minutes or so. Otherwise, we'll have uh, sitting in the afternoon. Okay. Thank you. So, Raghav.